You have probably noticed that this lockdown isn't being taken quite as seriously as the previous one. Now, in part, this is inevitable. People are less scared of coronavirus this time around. Now they understand what it's about. It's also down to past mistakes from this government. People saw that Dominic Cummings broke the rules and the government defended him. So they think, why should I follow these rules? But in the short term, I think there are also some, some very simple failures of this government to sort of get people in the spirit of a lockdown. They haven't really bothered with any messaging at all to tell us to stay at home. They sort of had one announcement, oh, we're in, we're in a second lockdown, um, and that was it. We haven't really heard anything from them after that. Now, if what you're looking for is an effective public messaging campaign, which sort of shows you why staying at home is a good thing, why lockdown is necessary, no one has done it better than the Germans, who for some reason are just better at coronavirus than, than the rest of us. Um, well, the rest of us in Western Europe anyway. Um, let's take a look at this, which puts our government to shame. I think it was in the winter 2020 when the whole land on us looked. I was just 22, I studied machine bau in Chemnitz, when the second wave came. 22. Diesem Alter will man doch feiern. Studieren, jemanden kennenlernen als sowas oder mit Freunden ein Trinken gehen. Doch das Schicksal hatte andere Pläne mit uns. Eine unsichtbare Gefahr bedrohte alles, woran wir glaubten. Und das Schicksal dieses Landes lag plötzlich in unseren Händen. Also fassten wir all unseren Mut zusammen und taten, was von uns erwartet wurde. Das einzig Richtige. Wir taten nichts. Absolut gar nichts. Waren faul wie die Waschbären. Tage und Nächte lang blieben wir auf unserem Arsch zu Hause und kämpften gegen die Ausbreitung des Coronavirus. Unsere Couch war die Front und unsere Geduld war unsere Waffe. Wissen Sie, manchmal muss ich fast ein bisschen schmunzeln, wenn ich an diese Zeit zurückdenke. Das war unser Schicksal. So wurden wir zu Helden. Damals. In diesem Corona-Winter 2020. No, I love that advert. I mean, it's funny, but also I just, I love the message. So I, I really felt in the first lockdown, this is maybe quite personal to me, but for a while people say, how are you, how are you finding um, the lockdown? And I was like, well, I mean, obviously there are downsides, but to be honest, I used to feel guilty if by the end of the day I hadn't left the house, if I just sort of read articles online and watched documentaries, I'd feel like, oh, I can't believe I've, I've stayed in all day. Now I get to feel pride. Now I feel civic pride if I have sat on the sofa for, for 16 hours before going straight back into bed. And I always was a bit surprised that the government weren't really running on this, this message because obviously I, I don't want to be here downplaying the huge costs, the huge downsides of lockdowns. And I know for so many people it's in, incredibly difficult um, if you're in a, you know, not everyone can sort of just lie down and be lazy and, and watch movies all day long if you've got young children, if you've got a difficult living situation. You know, not everyone can do this. But it does seem to me that the government haven't made, or our government haven't made enough of the fact that one of the most important lower cost things we can do, um, lower cost by that I mean human cost over the coming winter, is encouraging young people to make the most of sitting on your ass and staying at home. Um, and I think that comparison between, obviously it's, it's silly and it's, it's meant to be lighthearted, but the comparison between what do you have to do to you know, rise up to the challenge in a war, is you, have, you, know, you have to put your life in danger, Whereas this time around, um, you know, and the government sort of, uh, our government at least, sort of by hammering home how a lockdown would be the worst thing to possibly happen, I think partly because it's bad for the economy, they almost overstated the point. Because given that this is probably the biggest crisis that's going to, you know, occur in you know, my first 35 years on this world, I don't know when climate change is going to properly hit, then how lucky are we that the response for us, the way we step up, is we just watch movies and, and read books and read magazines. Again, I'm not saying this is a universal experience, but as it's the most important thing we can do to, to get us through this winter without having you know, enormous amounts of coronavirus deaths, it just surprises me that the UK government hasn't gone for this same sort of tactic, this same style of saying, no, stay at home. One, it might not be the end of the world for you. And also this is the number one thing you can do to help us survive this particular wave of the pandemic. 
Ash, I want to go to you. Um, I suppose two levels. I mean, is that attractive to you? What that what that advert is telling you to do to sort of step up for your country, for your nation, for your people, for the world um, by lying on your couch for 16 hours a day watching watching movies and getting takeaway? I mean, I've been a leader in this years before the pandemic was even on the horizon. I was on my ass doing mm. absolute niche. And where's my medal? You've always been at the cutting edge of global trends, actually, Ash, I think. I really so have I'm not, been. I'm not surprised you're at the forefront of this one as well. As long as, as, long, as long as they're mostly horizontal. But the reason why that the British government can't, can't speak in that register is because, one, it's always been split on the issue of lockdowns, why we went in late. The, um, you know, Conservative cabinet is riven uh, with divides on whether or not the health of the country should be balanced against the health of the economy it's a false opposition of course because you know a healthy economy is one where people aren't dying of a deadly disease by the by the you know truckload mm. um but the cabinet is divided. You've also got the problem of internal party management. You've got, you know, backbenchers who are very, very anti-lockdown. So that's one reason why the government couldn't be convincing uh, and just roll out the advertising campaign and, you know, really try and make that messaging work. The second thing is that they completely immolated their own credibility over the Dominic Cummings affair. So you can't really make the point of, you know, everyone do your bit, stay at home when the government's chief advisor has raced up to Durham, tested his eyes at Barnard Castle and done a press conference from the Downing Street Rose Garden to tell everyone why it's OK. You also have the unique stupidity of Boris Johnson, because he is a stupid man talking about I went to the hospital while shaking hands mm. with all of the coronavirus patients and then getting coronavirus and ending up in the ICU. So there isn't a figure within the government um that can take the lead on this and speak with credibility and with with authority and the third thing i think is the specific um subversion of the kind of wartime heroism within that advert and that's why it's so funny and so effective when you see like you know the explosion reflected off of the glasses is that this country this country and its sense of its history collectively the nation is high off the smell of its own farts it really is and because of the way in which the story of world war ii has been told turned into a story of british exceptionalism um you know the the sole unique achievement of of great britain it means that it's been remarkably uh, flexible and can be bent into whatever the needs of the moment are as long as you emphasize that story of British exceptionalism. So once upon the time, uh, that story of British exceptionalism was about exceptional collective effort. It was something which, you know, justified the transformative labor agenda of, you know, 1945. Um, but today it's most frequently invoked with regards to coronavirus as a kind of, you know, I was born in 1958, but don't let that stop you know, that's not going to stop me telling you how I single handedly survived the blitz. Therefore, I'm going to throw myself upon the mercy of the pandemic. The logic there, of course, again, is faulty. It's like saying, you know, people survived the blitz not by interrupting their day in any way. There were Anderson shelters. People had to, you know, black out all of their lights. There were really strict rules about this kind of thing. You know, so I imagine, I don't know, take some lockdown skeptics, you know, you would ask Martin Daubney, for instance, you know, had you lived during the Blitz, would you have been up on your roof fixing the Christmas lights to spell out, you know, fuck off, Jerry? No, you wouldn't have. Um, so I think it's also about the way in which that sense of British exceptionalism, um, that story of British exceptionalism and the way in which World War II is invoked has become actually really corrosive to the collective effort which is needed in order to suppress the virus, right? The virus and its ability to infect people is the kind of cumulative product of all of our social behaviours. Um, and we don't have a national story uh, for that, which is powerful, which is dominant, which is hegemonic at the moment. Um, and I think that that's why the Germans were able to produce this advert. There are, you know, specific things about the conservative government, this conservative government, but I also think that there are, you know, longer term historical factors at play as well. well i imagine the history of the wartime spirit in germany is pretty goddamn complicated i don't, I don't really know how it works when they play off that particular historical analogy but i mean it, in a way though I, I think the cummings thing I, I don't think we can overstate the the importance of that 
because the wartime analogy, I mean, that was played on quite a lot. Um, in the in the first round of the lockdown, um, you, you remember sort of the BBC changed its entire programming to be this is for a lockdown. You know, you had that who's that Joe Bates is that his name? Joe Wicks, the guy, the PE guy, the PE guy with the long hair, who sort of like you know parents love him. He was doing the sort of exercise on the television for you to do in your living room. There was this whole sort of all of Britain's cultural industries and 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 political class sort of came together to say we're doing something exceptional now. We're coming together to solve a, a societal problem and um, which needs a collective solution. Let's all do it together. Now I think two things happened which was one Dominic Cummings broke the rules. Um so the the message had to transform from we know this is hard but you can do it let's make the most of it to we know this is hard which means that we can't accept any expect anyone to follow the rules because they're just too difficult. Um anyone using their common sense would break them. Um which became basically the government's official position. And also I I would link back actually to what you said Ash there which is the the the, the spirit which was generated in the second world war in 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 this country did lead to a labor government who sort of invested in the economy you know created a more collectivist economy and i think basically many people in the conservative party freaked out that that would happen again so they saw that in the first wave in the first lockdown we had that was sort of encouraging a, a collective spirit in in the population people being people suggesting oh maybe we should pull together maybe we should pay essential workers more maybe we should pay um nurses and and doctors more um maybe we should all sort of act as a community instead of being forced to to act as these sort of atomistic individualized beings and they got freaked out by that which is i think the biggest motivation actually behind this pushback against lockdown from sort of right wing back benches and obviously from people at the top of government as well rishi sunak doesn't seem to like it very much and as we've discussed boris johnson seems to go along with whoever had a conversation with him last um there is a sequel um to that advert which is just as good actually so we're going to show you that now that I'm going to go and get some more thoughts from Ash 2020 ja das ist lange her wir hatten uns gerade eben kennengelernt und wir waren neugierig auf das leben auf unsere gemeinsame zukunft ne aber dann änderte sich plötzlich alles und das ganze land schaute voller hoffnung auf uns junge leute wir fassten uns ein herz und taten nix wir schimmelten zu hause rum trafen möglichst wenige leute und verhinderten damit die ausbreitung von covid-19 dieser unsichtbaren Gefahr, die nicht nur unser Land, sondern die ganze Welt bedroht. Wenn Sie mich heute fragen, wie wir jungen Leute das damals ausgehalten haben und äh, so tapfer zu Hause rumgammeln konnten, <lacht> vielleicht ähm, stimmte es, wenn die Leute damals sagten, besondere Zeiten brauchen besondere Helden und ja. Äh, Weiß Gott, ja, das waren wir. Wir waren besondere Helden. <laughs> Become a hero and fight coronavirus. It's every every good, I suppose, public information campaign needs a love story. Although I can see why they didn't lead with that because you could watch that and think, well, I I would be happy for lockdown if I had a beautiful girlfriend. Um, but if you don't have a beautiful partner, maybe you want to go out. Anyway, Ash, your thoughts on that? Maybe we shouldn't go down that rabbit hole. Oh, I didn't think you'd be that happy if you were locked down with your beautiful girlfriend. No, I mean, but yeah, that, well. yeah, I mean, we could mo we could modify that video slightly. You know, I I I, I, mean, I wouldn't mind the the bucket of fried chicken and the you know. <laughs> anyway, my my primary romantic attachment in that video was in fact the bucket of fried chicken, and I don't exactly. care who knows it. I don't care who knows it. Um, I mean, the the thing about, I think, that one, uh, in a way, which was different from the first one, which was kind of, you know, lazy and a bit grotty, and that was why it was funny, is that this kind of leaned into the kind of exceptional joys of lockdown in terms of being liberated from work. You're just sort of mm. lounging around with people and it's playful. And again, that's hard to cut into when, you know, 
you're a conservative government, which has been vested for the last 10 years of creating as precarious an economy for young people as possible, and also saying, you've got to get back into the office, you've got to get back into universities, the entire country depends on you getting a half price Nando's, what are you, you know, what are you doing, get out of your house. Um, And I think that there is a bit of, you know, it's that strongly conservative instinct within the Conservative Party, which is you cannot under any circumstances undermine the sense of the inerrant nobility of working till you die right and so nobody wants to touch that the idea that there are aspects of lockdown particularly if you have a stable and secure income if you don't have dependents to look after taking up more of your time because it is really challenging if you have kids and there are people who you know are carers for a family member and when you don't have help from the outside anymore that's really really difficult but, you know, if you're in a kind of situation like me and you are in, Michael, which is your income somewhat stable, you know, you've got a stable place to live. It's kind of all right. There's we like no watching one... Netflix with takeaways and we're lucky enough to be able to, yeah, to do absolutely. that for one winter. And then there's also the stuff which is fun because you're working from home, which means that you can do your meetings with the camera turned off while you, for instance, try and perfect your recipe for flapjacks, as I've been trying to do. Thank you